We also presented uh, a, a, an analysis uh, on uh, the hero population, the phase three trial of Relagolix. And we looked at the use of Relagolix with patients who were receiving um, or who had a concomitant use of either docetaxel or enzalutamide or radiation therapy versus the uh, um, LHRH population. And we saw you know, continued uh, supportive um, efficacy of the testosterone suppression and no untoward safety signals and any imbalance. So I do think Relagolix, this oral GnRH antagonist, is, is, has been a really important 2020 advancement uh, for our patients with ADT. Uh, on top of that, we, we presented some uh, real world evidence of how uh, our colleagues are sequencing radium-223 after first line novel hormonal agents in MCRPC. Uh, and I think one of the take homes there is, it, it, and we recognized that uh, the more therapies that patients can receive with MCRPC in a timely and appropriate fashion tends to uh, not prevent uh, other therapies such as the use of taxane based treatment, but ultimately at the end of the day, uh, provides uh, prolongation of survival. We had a really nice pre uh, presentation and, and poster of the ARCHES trial, the use of enzalutamide in uh, MCSPC. We looked at the difference between patients who had presented with de novo metastatic versus those who had uh, recurrent or what some would call primary progressive. Uh, and this was a really interesting study continuing to show the, the benefit of enzalutamide in either one of these populations. Additionally, we, we worked on a, a phase two study of an oral dose of Taxel uh, with a, a, a small European-based company called uh, Modra Pharmaceuticals. Uh, but we had uh, both US and, and European sites, and we saw a really a, a very nice efficacy of the oral taxane therapy. Uh, in combination with a ritinavir, which helps the uh, um, the the, the biomolecular um, and biophysiology of the of the uh, of the oral taxane, we saw and presented its efficacy and safety. Kind of a nice option for oral therapy, especially during a pandemic. Uh, additionally, we presented um, the use of a a, a, a PIK3 AKT inhibitor. Uh, Capiva Sertib in combination with abiraterone as a phase one study in uh, MCRPC patients. <clears throat> I think that this further uh, use of a PIK3 AKT inhibitor based upon molecular stratification of P10 loss, particularly uh, with NGS as opposed to IHC, but we still need to get greater interrogation on this. How can we combine two different targeted uh, areas to help our patients uh, in certain populations? And we looked at the, the safety and that tolerability, uh, and that was also presented. Um, and then finally, another really uh, kind of a cool um, uh, look back on a retrospective analysis of a large number uh, of patients in, in the U.S. was combining the Prolaris CCP score and the CAPRA score, or what we now call the CCR, uh, and, and finding that by this risk stratification could give us an opportunity compared to just looking at these uh, constructs of CCP separately or CAPRA separately or NCCN um, metrics uh, uh, parameters separately by combining the, and, and, and looking at the CCR we're able to better uh, inform patients who may not necessarily need ADT while they're getting radiation therapy in the intermediate risk group and even the high and the very high risk groups. Really kind of a, a fascinating uh, and important retrospective analysis. And uh, that's a, a publication that's uh, in progress. A really fun and, and busy uh, ASCO GU. Um, uh, and and I'm, I'm excited for 2021. And and hope that our colleagues you know, continue to have opportunity to, to uh, learn virtually, but also as the pandemic hopefully subsides, we'll have an opportunity to meet each other in, in person again.